The third one is you need to be in the virtual agents. And this is really where things are starting to trend, is automation with artificial intelligence, collaborative intelligence, and virtual agents. Whether you're in Microsoft virtual agents or you're in custom built bots, you need to understand how a bot functions, how it learns machine learning, artificial intelligence. You need to learn those things because that's the real future. And you're going to be using cloud computing, the, the Azure, the AWS. You're going to be using the Power Platform, Power Apps, Power Automate to build bots. It all points to artificial collaborative intelligence, all of it. What's up guys, welcome on to the Work Wherever podcast. My name is Roy Edwards, I'm your host. This podcast, we talk about tech, tech innovation, automation, collaborative intelligence, and the ability to work wherever so you can live every day like it is Saturday. Now, today I'm going to be speaking to my fellow developers out there. So I am a developer. At least I, that's my background, I guess I should say. I don't really do much developing anymore. I, st I still do, but I have a team who who helps me with that. So I, I but I have a development background, I consider myself a software engineer. When people ask, they'll say, you know, what are you, what's your trade? And so I say, you know, I'm a, hey, I'm a, I'm a software engineer turned entrepreneur. And I've been able to move around the industry because I understand the trends. I see what's going to happen. I've been, I pay attention to the news. I pay attention to what the big tech giants are doing, much like you all, because you're listening to this podcast. Congratulations. And then based on those trends, I will make a strategic move based on my career and based on what I'm seeing. So my move into Microsoft 365 was because I was a soft, I was a, uh, well, let's back it up. My move into Microsoft SharePoint on-prem was because I was an HTML developer prior to, and I saw Dreamweaver coming out and WordPress, and I was like, not doing that. I'm gonna go develop for big organizations' intranets. What was the most popular intranet? SharePoint. All right, I'm a SharePoint developer. Learned SharePoint, JavaScript. You know, I already knew JavaScript, but I learned more of it. Uh, started implementing HTML and built up SharePoint. Really understood SharePoint. Became a, you know, SharePoint SME, if you will. And then, SharePoint 2013, what's next? Everybody's looking to migrate, what's next? 16? Okay, yeah, sure, but, but what's after 16? Instead of looking to 16, what, what's really next? Oh, 365. Oh, 365, no more InfoPath? InfoPath is gonna be retired in 2022? What's after that? And so that, a lot of people didn't, didn't do that and they just kept working with InfoPath kept working with SharePoint, kept working with this technology because that's what businesses wanted now and not what businesses were going to be going to in five years. So you have to work as a developer, you have to work and function as if you're your own entrepreneur and understand the market five years from now or you will die with the market. Much like an entrepreneur, if they're not looking three, five, maybe 10 years into the future as to what the trends of that industry is, if you focus on a single product, a single offering, a single distributor, or a single revenue stream, then if that thing ever dies, changes, which guess what? There's always change. Then you're screwed. You're stuck and you're behind the eight ball because once that thing's dead, you can't pivot very quickly. And so I looked ahead. So, okay, Microsoft 365, power platform. Interesting. Low code, no code. Ooh, low code, no code. Maybe I shouldn't spend too much time learning to develop these multiple languages of Angular and all this stuff. Probably never gonna use it. I use it a little bit, but not really. And so I, instead I looked into JSON, which is heavily used in low code, no code. And I looked into Python, which, you know, may have been a waste of time, but I looked into it. There's a lot of artificial intelligence that runs Python. And so I looked into cloud computing and then, what do you know, six years later when everybody else caught up to where I was, I have, a resume. Oh, you guys need this now? Big enterprise organization? 
you need this now, but you don't have the talent, okay, and you want to pay senior money because that's what you're used to paying developers, uh, but there are no seniors out there because this is a new tech, well, I'll raise my hand. I'm as senior as you're going to get. Technology has only been around X amount of years, and I've been using it since the very, very, very beginning. And so a lot of developers would wait till that happened. Oh, my business is moving this. I better look into it to start learning a, a new trend. And guess what? You are no longer a senior at that point. You're no longer a senior. And that's what I'm going to get into today is the death of the developer. Because developers run through this life cycle where, so tech is forever changing. And this is why if you're a developer or want to be a developer and you're listening to this and you're you know younger uh, and you're going into college or something like that and you're like, I want to be a developer, great. Well, when you're in college, learn how to think like a developer. Learn how to think like an engineer. Don't get so bogged down with a specific script, a specific line of code, a specific anything, because by the time that you enter into college and go through all of your courses and then graduate, four years have passed and the technology that you thought that you mastered is dead now. So now you're entering into the job market and you're like, well, I'm a computer science major. And I have four years, I did my uh, you know, thesis statement on this and I did this and that, and guess what? Nobody cares because you haven't done anything. That's old tech. The technology you were using was not new age technology. It was older technology that your professors understood and could convey to you and teach you that businesses were using five years ago which those businesses should be looking five, 10 years in, in advance. So you learned five-year-old tech, spent four years doing so in college, you're now using nine, 10-year-old technology that does not exist in the enterprise world. Good luck finding a job. That's how developers die. But when developers come out of college, they take a look and they're like, I have a degree. It's a computer science degree. It's a tech degree. I should come in at a mid-level position. No, you should come in at junior level. That's one scenario. One avenue where developers go to die because they let their ego and they let their uh, education background hurt them. Because the best developers I know don't have computer science degrees. <laughs> In fact, the worst developers I know don't have computer science degrees because they went to college and learned through these professors who weren't that good to begin with. And then we're using old technologies and they come out and they focus so much on what that old technology does instead of what the industry is doing and how to think and how to solve problems and if then statements. Instead of focusing on that, they focus on a specific. So instead of going, you know, you see this oftentimes with people who are book smart, right? But they don't have any common sense. Like, yeah, you're book smart. You're not real world smart because you focused in on two pigeonholes of like an idea and you understood that, the game of memorization, but you can't apply it to life. You didn't learn how to learn, you just memorized. You learned the rules, and, but you never learned how to apply the rules. Book smart, street smart, which one would you rather have? That's the same thing that happens with developers, young developers, they go to school, instead of understanding how to learn and how to utilize that technology and how to utilize the thought process of problem solving, they focus on tech and dive into that technology. And then when the time they get out of college, it's a dead tech and they say, oh yeah, I remember that. Man, wow, well, we, haven't, we haven't used that in like six years, seven years. We're on to the next. In fact, we were hoping to hire somebody who could help us get onto this next platform. So good luck. The other death of the developer happens when somebody has been focusing on a technology for so long, has been working within an, an organization for so long, and they do things the old way. I'm gonna build job, JavaScript. Oh yeah, you know what? Instead of me learning how to do it the right way, I'm gonna just write a script that bypasses it. Oh yeah, yeah, well, you know, I could do it that way. There are some new technologies, but I don't really wanna learn those new technologies. I know that I can just run a script, a jo JavaScript that'll bypass it. And guess what, you got, all, you got away with that for years because organizations own their own servers. And so when you own your own servers, you can do almost anything you want to them. They're your servers. You can manipulate them. You can break the rules. There's nobody really patching these servers, updating them, right? Think of it like this. If you jailbreak your iPhone, you can do whatever you want on the iPhone. You can break the rules. But then what happens after you jailbroke your iPhone and you want to 
download the latest iOS update, it wipes out your jailbreak, right? Now what do you do? Will you jailbreak it again? That doesn't make any sense. And that's what was happening. People were writing all these, they were writing all this heavy script, writing all this JavaScript. Instead of following the trends, they were keep doing their same old thing, keep doing their same old thing. There's a way around it. There's a way around it. There's a way around it. I'm going to do it this way. And then the technology passes them. And then we had the cloud movement, the boom in cloud. So organizations are now looking at the cloud and they're saying, that's where I want to go. I don't got to maintain my own servers. Microsoft or AWS will do it for me. I just run my stuff in the cloud. I can save money, spin up an, an, an instance, literally in an instance. I could spin up a database. I could clone that database. I can run applications and tear them down the same day. Oh, Black Friday's coming up. Oh, my website. I am gonna do you know a hundred thousand visitors on Black Friday, and the next day nobody will, nobody will come back. So why why do I need this huge server room? I just run a little small little server, and then on Black Friday I'll go to the cloud so I can handle all the traffic, and then shut the cloud down afterwards. So these people, as they started to get more smart on the cloud, they forgot to tell their developers. And so developers are then, who are these JavaScript developers, are then running around and they're saying, well, I'm a senior. You need to pay me like a senior. Okay. Well, um, everything's moved to low code, no code, for the most part. Everything is run to UX UI, cloud, cloud as well. I mean, you have Azure functions and you have other, but if you didn't learn that, whew, you're not a senior anymore. I hate to tell you. You may have sent, spent the last 10, 15 years designing, architecting, engineering, writing scripts, code, doing all these things of things that were good five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. But when your organization moves on and you try to raise your hand, I'm a senior. Okay, great. Tell me about your experience with uh, Microsoft Azure. Well, we didn't run Azure. Uh, we ran uh, on-prem. So I did a lot of uh, manipulating servers, did uh, you know, JavaScript and you know, AngularJS and did a lot of coding in that way. Okay, that's not what I asked. Tell me about your experience with Microsoft Azure. I have none. Okay, Mark. Okay, you know, well, Microsoft, you know, they, they're they're they are running in the power. Tell me about your experience with Power Platform. Oh well, you know, in SharePoint, you know, oh absolutely, I have tons of SharePoint experience. Uh, well, that's not what I asked. I asked about Power Apps, Power Platform. Oh well, we were on SharePoint 2010, 2013, and we ran InfoPath. That's irrelevant. <laughs> it's a total another application. So you have no experience in Power Apps, got it. Tell me your experiences building workflows. Ah, oh, this one, got this one. SharePoint Designer. I am a wizard in SharePoint Designer. SharePoint Designer was, oh man, I build workflows, tons of workflows. Dynamics, ah, oh, I build business process workflows all day, every day. Okay, well that's all legacy. It's all old. What have you done for me lately? Tell me about Power Automate. see how you can go from a senior to a junior like that and that's what people don't understand if you as a developer don't see yourself as an entrepreneur and you don't understand the five-year trends you don't understand the 10-year trends if you don't if you don't consume technology news and podcasts like this you're dead in the water you're gonna end up that senior junior you're going to end up that person who has 15 years, 20 years IT experience, but is getting paid like a, the, the college graduate because you guys are equal. Why would I pay somebody six figures to do a job and learn how to do a job when I can pay somebody out of college who's young and hungry and wants to figure it out? The exact same thing, and you guys are at the exact same level. Oh, but Roy, the senior developer, he has so many 
you know, he has so much knowledge, institutional knowledge, and he understands the the industry. Well, no, because if he understood the, understood the industry, he would have looked ahead and he would have known that this thing was coming. So he must not have that much industry experience. Oh, and the institutional knowledge? Sure. Well, the institutional knowledge was him building old things, which was bad habits. Writing hard code against old servers, that's not the way of the world now. So that is a bad habit that I don't want brought into this new wave of tech and cloud computing. So that's a mark against the other guy. So you're saying that I should hire this guy who has bad habits, doesn't have the whereabout or the know-how to look into the future of tech. I should pay him six figures instead of paying this young hungry guy who has equal knowledge of new technology, maybe a little bit more, because he just came up through learning a little bit about it, hopefully. But equal, I should pay one three times more than the other? Does that make sense to you? If you were a business owner, what would you do? Would you go with the senior? And so I know what you're saying. You're like, well, how do I, how do I stay a senior? You look at the trends. And here are the trends for you. I'll give you the three trends that are, that are, that are going on right now. So if you are a developer, you need to, you need to hitch your wagon to one of these if your organization's not there yet. If your organization is still running legacy applications and they're still running on-prem servers and you're still running 2013, 2016 applications, this is what you need to do. You look at A, if you're in the, and these are Microsoft. A, you need to go into the Dataverse. You need to go into Power Platform. You need to understand Canvas apps. You need to understand RPAs, the robotic process automation. You need to understand Canvas apps. You need to understand model-driven apps. You need to understand what a data table is and Dataverse. You need to understand that if you're going to stay in Microsoft. Point blank, period. If you don't understand that, you're screwed. There's nothing left for you. Now, if you want to go into cloud computing, if you want to go into legacy, you want to build applications, you need to go into cloud computing, you need to understand Azure you need, or, and or you need to understand AWS. You need to understand what an instance is. You need to understand how to spin up an instance, how to spin up an EC2. You need to understand what an application gateway is, a load balancer, a VPC. You need, you need to understand the basics of cloud computing so that you can translate some of your old scripts and understanding into this new world. That's the second one. So you're either in Microsoft in the Power Platform or you're in cloud computing on Azure or AWS. The third one is you need to be in the virtual agents. And this is really where things are starting to trend is automation with artificial intelligence, collaborative intelligence, and virtual agents. Whether you're in Microsoft virtual agents or you're in custom built bots, you need to understand how a bot functions, how it learns machine learning, artificial intelligence. You need to learn those things because that's the real future. And you're going to be using cloud computing, the, the Azure, the AWS. You're going to be using the Power Platform, Power Apps, Power Automate to build bots. It all points to artificial collaborative intelligence, all of it. If you're in Microsoft Power Platform, all of it points to virtual agents. If you're in cloud computing, all of it points to AI machine learning. So if you are not understanding AI, ML, or at least recognizing the trends and knowing where you need to get for the next five years, you're dead. You're dead. You need to know that now. You need to be signing up for the free beta tests on Virtual Agent for Microsoft 365. You need to be going and signing up for a free AWS account so you can try and break things. You need to be ordering a uh, deep racer car or a deep lens or messing with uh, Amazon Alexa or Cortana Box. You need to be mess messing with this now while you have a job on the side so that when your organization, your enterprise, or your job shuts down, you can go somewhere else and understand and help some other organization pull into the new, pull into the, new, pull into the now. Or you're going to end up like the 17 to 20,000 people who just got laid off by big tech. Because every single one of those people got laid off because they're replaceable. Every single one of them. You don't, you don't lay off your best guys. You lay off the ones who cost you too much money and are replaceable. Twitter, Meta, Snap, uh, Lyft, all of it, they're, they're laying off the developers who do legacy stuff. They're laying off the developers who are not understanding of the next level. 
They're under they're laying off the customer service representatives who don't understand omnichannel. They're laying off all of these people who are not looking into the future and understanding the trends. Now, will all those other people get a job somewhere? Probably. Yeah. If all the companies are making layoffs, eventually they're going to hire back or they're going to change the way that they do business internally through automation. You better hope it's not the second. You better hope you don't have to totally reinvent yourself as a developer because you failed to look at the trends. So be careful because this is the death of the developer. I've seen it happen so many times as a SharePoint developer. I have so many friends that were SharePoint developers along with me and then I move on to Power Apps and Power Platform and people call me crazy. What are you doing that for? What's that for? That's hard. I don't really want to do that yet. My company's not there yet. That's the point. That's the point. Right now, I'm, I'm building virtual agents right now. I'm building bots that run Power Automates, that create omni-channel chat agents, that create cycles in Microsoft Dynamics, CRM, and ERP systems. I'm building bots. Not because I'm good at it yet, which the bots I built are, are kind of cool. I've been building bots for two years. So in the next two years, when bots start to really hammer home, I'm gonna have four years experience building virtual agents and building automation and bots. Are you gonna hire me? Or are you gonna hire the guy who used to be a senior who will, uh, I'll pick it up. You know, I'll learn about bots this time. Who are you gonna, who are you gonna hire? It's, it's not a hard question. And it's really not a hard concept to understand. The death of the developer is constant. Technology is constantly changing. If you are not keeping up and being ahead of the trends, if you're not going to tech conferences, if you're not listening to podcasts like this, if you're not reading the news, which by the way, that's why we read the news in this podcast, if you're not doing these things, if you're not listening and subscribe to our podcast and our YouTube, you are dying as a developer. The death is coming for you, buddy. It's coming and it'll be here soon. Guys, thanks for hanging out. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. Like and subscribe for tech news, tech updates, tech trends. What we're going to talk, continue to talk about AI, collaborative intelligence. If you want to be on the forefront of this stuff with me, if you want to learn and, and, and go through some of our training platforms, if you are like, oh my gosh, I don't, we don't even run DevOps. Guess what? I got training courses for you at Online Academy. You'll be able to go to goworkwherever.com and then you'll be able to go to onlineacademy.cloud. You'll be able to sign up for our courses, earn badges. Learn about tech trends, learn about DevOps, learn about all these technologies and tools that we're using on a daily basis and helping the military automate their processes and procedures. You'll be able to learn all of those things and then you'll be able to put a big old stamp at the bottom of your resume that says, I understand the tech trends because Capital Presence told me. I listen to the Work Wherever podcast, so I am not going to die a senior developer. Guys, thanks for hanging out. Until next time, see you. Hey there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for all the latest videos from Capital Presence.